Hey, thanks for joining me once again. I got Tom Scioli's Witch Man from his Kickstarter and uh, came in the mail very recently and I thought it would be a good time to look at this thing. Uh, this is, uh, it's a very different book and that alone, in a way, it makes it worth it already. Um, there's so many, uh, there's so many books out there in kind of standard comic book world. They're just kind of variations on the same theme. And you could say that is what this is. It's a kind of a variation on a superhero kind of concept, but it's just done in a different way. Tom Scioli is a guy that has a very unique style and I am by no means an expert on his work. Uh, I know him from, of course, the Cartoonist Kayfabe channel, like I think a lot of us, and I'm not going to say all of us, but uh, there's no denying that the popularity of that channel uh, brought him, him to more attention to, the, to more people. And um, he, uh, he's just, and I'm sitting here trying to find the words to kind of explain what I, I feel about him or what I think about him. It, it's kind of hard because um, he he seems to be such a profoundly creative guy, just bursting with ideas. If you follow his uh, Instagram, um, there was a stretch of time for a while where he would, for example, showcase ideas that he has. Like there's this Godzilla idea that he wanted to do, and he'll do like pages and pages of really rough art on a digital device like a you know he draws digitally i'm guessing on like an ipad or something like that where he will they're, they're very rough very quick drawings but he will go on forever and ever and ever just to showcase this godzilla story that he wants to tell even if he doesn't get the opportunity to do it officially and for real like he would maybe want to but um he still is going to tell it even if it's just like in quick rough sketch format on his instagram just to share his idea he's just bursting with concepts and ideas and creativity and um if you ever look at uh, lo uh look at him <laughs> listen to him on any interviews watch him on the kayfabe channel with some of the past interviews he talks very fast. I feel like if you listen to him, he kind of feels like he's talking so fast, like his mouth can't keep up with the, his brain, meaning he's he's got so many things he wants to sh to speak on and say and share these ideas. And sometimes he kind of is stumbling over his own words in a way. If, if you've ever listened to him, I wonder if you kind of hear the same thing. He's just bursting with ideas. So anyway, uh, he did a Kickstarter not too long ago. And um, I have never picked up any of his works at all. Um, I, I, it's one of those things where I, I definitely want to get the uh, Jack Kirby biop, biopic book um, that uh, he did and the Stanley one. But this one is more of like a, like a just more of a straightforward comic book introducing a hero, a character. And... Um, you know, it, him doing a Kickstarter, I wanted to support that. I wanted to throw in on that, get a, get a copy of the book, let his thing be successful, which it was, obviously, and um, see what this new thing is like. And um, it's very different. I know I've, I've probably said that already, but um, it's, uh, I don't know, you have to kind of... I wanted I was I wanted to say like you have to kind of be in the right mindset to really understand that but that might kind of sound condescending uh to Shioli's work like it's either good or it's not it is definitely good but you have to be able to see why it's good if you're somebody who's only looking at um like old school image comic stuff like a lot of the stuff I review on my channel you may look at this and go what the hell is this what is this nonsense like you might not get it but you have to kind of see what the guy's doing and understand the um the skill level involved the craft that he understands there's a reason that tom scioli was very close friends with jim rugg and the unfortunately late ed piscor um those three guys have an understanding of comics that um i just feel like there's not many people that have this kind of deep understanding of how of, of the comic medium and the art form and then the stuff that they make, even if you don't like it, I think that you can say that you could respect it. Uh, you know, I was collecting Piscor's uh, Red Room and uh, I got the first five or six or seven issues, something like that. 
and I ended up stopping because just the subject matter wasn't for me. And it wasn't that it was too gross or too violent because it was very much that. Uh, it just, it, it doesn't hold my interest too much, but I could understand the craft level that was going on. Same thing with this. Um, Shioli knows what he's doing, his storytelling. It, it, we'll just have to get into this. Um, I couldn't help but notice um, and kind of wonder if there's an intentional kind of homage to the, uh, um, oh my God, I'm blanking on that Alan Moore work about the 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 v for vendetta jesus christ <laughs> the guy that wears the mask with the kind of expressionless face and a hat and a cape i mean it's different this is like a almost like a joker kind of smile but this is a mask that this guy wears i wonder if there was some kind of intentional kind of homage to that or if it's just an entirely different thing but again just getting into it shioli's work again it's all digital but in some ways, what what I like is when you, maybe you can't necessarily tell artwork is digital. And there are a couple places where I'm like, okay, that looks like it. But it's it has a very kind of simplistic line to it. Um, it's not an overly render over rendered, overly cross hatched, hyper detailed thing. He's more interested. I I would say I'm not trying to speak for Shioli. I would never be that condescending. But um, he's more interested in selling you on the story and maybe the feeling and emotion of the, the work more than this dynamic, hyper-rendered image with lots of line work everywhere. And it's creative and it's interesting. Like, here you got the main character and then just these little drawings and the names of all these characters in the book. Introducing Witchman and all these different characters... Copyright to Tom Scioli, of course. And um, the true story, which is interesting. It's just kind of a funny thing. The true story of the creepiest super character of the decade. Another thing that I like about this book, if you watch my channel, you'll know that I've mentioned often. Oh, excuse me. You know, I've, you know that I've mentioned often how I appreciate it when a writer reserves the uh, urge to just fill up text boxes everywhere explaining things that you don't need to see. I would say that it's mostly, I'm, I was going to say a silent comic. It's not that, but he'll put in text boxes where needed and I'll have dialogue being spoken when needed, but so much of it is just told through the visuals. I appreciate that so much. I also see a little bit, a little bit of Matt Wagner in his work. Um, I can't explain how or why, just the way that Matt Wagner draws Grendel and Mage and things like that. I see some of that in, in his work. Also, his use of color, really bright, bold choices. And it's not this, um, like, computer coloring, hyper-rendered uh, fades and color modeling to give it three-dimensionality. It's just a bunch of flat, basic colors. But his understanding of how to use it, I think, is just... It's it's so simple, it's genius. Anyway, night falls on the bustling city of New Salem. I like that. It's a pretty good city shot. I mean, they're not... I mean, they're, there's just enough detail going on to completely get it. But, you know, it's just some basic shapes and some cube kind of cross-hatching to kind of indicate windows and stuff. The architecture's there. It works. It's It's simple. It's fun. I uh, really like this. It says, beyond the darkest corner of town stand the ominous witch tower. And I thought this thing looks pretty damn cool. Again, not overly rendered, but just enough detail to completely get it. I like the kind of, I don't know. I look at this kind of moon and for some reason, I'm reminded of something I feel like in an old, was it Chuck Jones kind of uh, Warner Brothers animation kind of thing. I feel like I've seen something like that. I couldn't tell you why. Um, I just know what it kind of reminds me of. Here we got the guy, the witch man himself. We're just we're just thrown into it. We're into it. We're not going to like have an entire comic of just the human guy and his struggles and his love life and his job. And then he's going to get his powers and be in the costume on the last page of issue one. Fuck that shit. Let's get into it. Here he is. Got It is kind of like cliche-ish 
witch stuff, although it is with a, a guy in the role. It's it's witch man, obviously. But, you know, churning up whatever's bubbling in his little cauldron here, skull faces and monster faces. He says, I see omens of ill fortune. It's time for action. Look at the simplicity of this bottom drawing. I mean, look at that. It's just a rough sketch, you know, but it tells the story. It works. I, it, I can't tell you why this would work here for this person and then other artists would do the same thing and I, I think that it wouldn't work. I don't know. I can't explain that. This cat, it per reads perfectly, the, the buggy eyes, the arch, the tail, but it's a very simple drawing. Grabs his broom. I like how the moon is a little bit kind of clouded over. I like the glowing light coming from inside the castle door there, like over in the main one. Close up of his evil cackling smile. And again, it's a mask. And then here he is zooming into the city. And again, look at this cape. Just big bubbly shapes. I feel like he probably... I, I would guess. I guess I don't know. I was going to say, I feel like he's probably able to uh, produce these pages, or at least some of them, relatively quickly because, you know, he's got a kind of a simplified art style. I like it. Um, this cartoony girl is a little bit more cartoony than I was kind of expecting. A little goofy. It's still fine. Um, it just kind of threw me off a little bit. It felt very different from the previous stuff. But uh, running... Bright lights behind her, like car headlights. And then it's like this monster car. Tells the story really effectively. I like the lights coming out. The bright lights bearing down on this kid. The shadows cast on the wall. Again, look at the simple use of coloring. It just tells the story exactly how you need. Monstrous creatures behind the wheel. And then they suddenly have a look of surprise. And then the car raises up and then witch man, so he's flying on his broom and he's got like a little Harry Potter wand type thing pointing it at the car. He's able to obviously magically levitate monster car way up in the sky. And then I love the little simplicity of this gesture. He just twirls, takes the car, flips it upside down and everyone drops out. Again, no words, no text boxes, nothing. You're just seeing what's happening. No sound effects. It's just, it's so simple. So it, it, that's, there's all these different things. The simple drawing, the simple coloring, the simple storytelling, no words, no sound effects, no text boxes. And it, that makes it stand out. And I was, as I was reading it, um, I found myself enjoying it more and more. I do want to mention though, also... Um, uh, I, you know, you support the Kickstarter. I did get the digital reward and I got the digital reward, which is just the digital files of this thing. So I'm at work, I'm on my phone, I take a break. Oh, look, I got the digital file. So I started flipping through it. And after a couple of pages, I shut it off. I've mentioned this once or twice before. I hate reading comics digitally. I just, I hate it. I used to, I would say that I would, it'd be my, it's my least preferred way to observe a thing. But I'm kind of getting to the point where I just hate it because it ruins it for me. I was flipping through these pages and I kind of didn't like it. And if I was just kind of doing it quickly and skipping by and moved on and I turned it off, I'm like, Ugh, I don't think I'm going to like this thing. I'm, you know, I was glad I supported the Kickstarter. But I'm like, Ugh, I don't think I'm going to like it. But once I got the book and I was reading the physical copy, Something about it just changed. It's just magical. This is just me. There's something special and magical about holding a physical copy of a thing and looking at it and having it rather than just get off the phone, get off the digital device. This is my opinion. Rob will die on this hill. Um, yeah, reading the digital stuff just kind of ruined it. And once I got the physical book, I'm like, okay, I'm happy. This is what I want. And so I'm just kind of of the opinion now. I'm just digital comics are not for me. I'm not interested. Um, I always thought this was a great shot. The perspective on this, these co support columns and this bridge, and then the screaming effects, the A's as they're smaller and get bigger and kind of offset as they come down and sploosh, sploosh, flash in, uh, splash in the water. Really well done. 
witch man, you know, flies off, comes up to the girl and the dog that were getting almost ran over. And he's like, do you need a lift? They're like, we're quite fine, thank you. He's like, well, suit yourself. So he goes to the monsters. And he's like, now that you've had a chance to cool off, it's time to go. Taking him to a police station. And it's like, well, well, the Chiller Gang. Nice work, Watchmen. So it's very much kind of a, your standard superhero thing. A guy's got uh, his superhero lair. He's got a vehicle. He flies into his city, uh, stops some bad guys, saves some innocent people. And then takes the villains, the bad guys, the criminals to the police station for justice. It's like the simple opening scene to a story. And here's like a, you know, big giant image of the guy. Again, simple drawing, but kind of effective. It says you might be wondering how I got started. Well, since you asked so nicely. And then here's kind of a basic origin. It was a dark and stormy night. I took shelter in an old house. I was in over my head. I saw things in that house. I'll never tell another living soul. When I woke up outside the house, I was clutching a book. I kept it under my bed and never looked at it until the day my father died. Something about his death didn't add up. So again, basic-ish superhero origin stuff. Just kind of done creepy. I mean, I thought the text box here saying, I saw things in that house. I'll never tell another living soul. That just kind of implies a creepiness that kind of surprised me of how effective it was. So it continues on. Using techniques described in the book, I was able to bring my father back from the other side. So here he is like reading from the book, candles and like a ghostly image. He's re he's, bringing back his father from the afterlife. The shambling mockery of my father told me he was murdered by a sheriff's deputy who was obsessed with my mother. In a moment of fearful dread, I sent my father's apparition away. What have I done? Did I condemn my father to the holy hell of the archdemon Bezelbobber, if I'm saying that right? Or maybe my father's revenant still roams the earth. Who knows? Bring my father's killer to justice was my first mission as watchman. Now I use these unholy powers from hell to do good here on earth. So again, kind of a basic superhero origin with some occult kind of ghostly demon magic-y things going on. Again, look at these very simple drawings. I love this panel. Just like blues and yellows. So neat. So... He gets himself a costume and then this shot of him up on the city, the white in the background, his billowing cape is just this weird black shape, simple colors, highlights on him, the perspective on the building. I, I, I don't know. I could never make something even just simplifying my art and doing simple flat colors on my own. I would never come up with this. But I like how there's, you know, text boxes to give a basic origin and we're back to like silent imagery telling you what's going on. A building implodes. So a giant skyscraper just pff, collapses. People are falling. Here comes Witch Man. He stops them, saves them. Just did like a heroic thing. It just jumps to, you know, an immediate like saving people. Then I guess we, we cut to a scene and more, more flat drab colors. Some creepy looking guy says, send the message. Let them know who they're dealing with. I thought this was an interesting kind of... Look at this panel where this guy that's here is walking into this building, probably the police station. You got the city in the background in color, but he is white. And then the border is kind of broken with the steps of the building left just open white like that. And then he himself, it's like a visual cue for the character himself where he's just flat white and simple drawings. But uh, they're here to uh, talk like a lawyer on, on behalf of the bad guys that the witch man put in jail. Um, th my client's boys are being unfairly imprisoned. Now acts of God are befalling the city. My client is not the type to make threats, but he has a strong hunch that as long as his boys are held unjustly, more acts of God will befall the city. And then we cut to another building exploding. So whoever this creepy bad guy is, while his kids, his boys, whatever that may mean, are in jail, the city's just going to be suffering kind of horrible catastrophes. Interesting. Here comes Witchman. It is kind of funny with him flying on the broom. You can almost look at his like, it's like he's holding his dick and it's pointing straight at us. I don't know if that's something that is just like a 
I can see Shioli doing that. You know, it is kind of a weird idea. Like, just the idea of, uh, you know, witches flying around on brooms are... It's kind of a, just a weird cliche concept anyway. And I've never seen, like, a guy do it. Um, of course, I can't help but uh, think of, you know, kind of a phallic imagery. But anyway, he's going along, fireman putting out a fire. Witch man's like, it's my fault. I'm going to have to end this. I re Again, I like this coloring, like double lit from both sides but you got like the reddish colors on one side these darker drab colors on the other um so the the bad guys that he caught earlier you're like you were free to go i can't believe we're letting these maniacs back on the street which man is watching from above another great overhead shot of this building like the perspective on it really well done I like this shot of them going down these stairs, heavily shadowed, tilted on its side, very moody. They're going in there to see their boss. They're like, thanks for busting us out, boss. The bad guy's like, why did you come here? Sorry, boss, we wanted to thank you. What's wrong with that? You were followed. No, we wasn't. You brought them right to me. Now go fix this problem you made for me. <clears throat> so, you know, the these dummy bad guys led whoever right to the bad guy. So they're going up. They got guns, knives in hand, starting some shit. And we got Witch Man. Another simple imagery. Uh, simple, like a very quick, sketchy drawing of him entering this building. Knife comes towards his head, uses his wand to deflect it. Bullet hits all around him. He's ducking around him. And again, it's kind of got that creepy vibe of like this ever-smiling mask on his face. I like this shot as they, he's coming down the stairs, they're shooting up at him and then he just jumps at them and the bullets just hitting his cape. And they're kind of creeped out at it. Another interesting shot. And again, the color choices on this, so wild and would never in a million years think of this. But he's coming down at him. They shoot at him. He grabs him. He's just kind of taking them out. They go to their boss. It's like, boss, help us. But they're like, wait, the boss is gone. Which man uses his wand. <clears throat> Got him strung up by webbing. Kind of Spider-Man-like. Which man knows to take this chair and tip it down. Opens up a secret passageway. He goes crawling through it. And you see like a train track and a tunnel. And so train tracks going off in different directions. He's like, the trail's gone cold. Then, so he was chasing the main villain who got away. And again, it doesn't tell you. It just shifts to another scene. It doesn't be like days later, blah, 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 this. It, and again, getting into some weird shit. Airplane falling out of the sky, but everyone's parachuting out of it. And this girl, she's like, what a great idea. A parachute for every passenger. But then her parachute gets hung up on the tail elevators of the uh, the plane here and starts dragging her down to the ground. So she's screaming, here comes Witch Man, you know, big dramatic shot of his wand, electrifying, glowing, snaps the wires from her parachute, dragging her down, and he grabs her and catches her. And so she's looking this strange Witch Man in the eye. Then he looks down at the plane, which is just barreling towards the city, going to be a horrible big smashing explosion destruction. Again, he takes his little wand, does this little twirly thing, and then the plane, you see like a... A, a burst of fire and he creates like a portal, a flaming portal. The plane goes into it and then it switches angle from like being flat to sideways, ejecting the plane out into the middle of like flat ground nowhere. So it kind of soft lands without exploding and killing anybody. Just saved a girl, stopped the plane from, you know, blowing up the city onto another scene. Here it comes. He's riding his broom. And this, I felt like, I, it has to be an intentional homage to the original Christopher Reeve Superman movie because this girl is like a reporter and she's meeting the witch man on the roof of her apartment, I guess, in kind of some sexy little outfit. Who is witch man? What does he want? Is he friend or foe? God, I, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but isn't that kind of the dialogue in that Superman movie or something similar where... The guy who runs the Daily Planet is like, who is this guy? What does he want? Is he a friend? You know, but uh, he comes down. She's like, 
she says, why are you? And he's like, excuse me. She says, why are you here? He says, to make the world a little less dangerous and a little more magical. I like it. It's just all classic superhero stuff distilled down to the basics. She says, where are you from? He's like, here. Tell me about your par parents. That's a little too personal. Some things aren't for sharing. Secret identity? Something like that. What's under your hat? He's like, my hair. <laughs> Why do you dress up like a witch? Is it cosplay? Are you a super fan? He says, no, I never liked witches. They always terrified me. So there's some images. It looks like maybe like the Wicked Witch of the West. It's interesting that this one has specifically got a box over its face. But um, she says, you have a broom that flies. How does that work? He's like, magic, of course. What about your wand? He says, you could hold it if you'd like. And so then we got this kind of big dramatic like physical interaction between these two. And I actually think this figure drawing on the girl is pretty damn good. You know, it works. She says, is there a magic word you need to say? He says, you can choose. Uh, any word you choose should do the trick. So it shows like, I guess she uses the wand and makes flowers kind of explode out of everywhere. Or she zaps this couch and it becomes like a neighing horse. <laughs> she's like that's amazing and he's like it's magic so she goes to take his mask off to see his human face boom giant explosion behind him interrupting the scene there's like a flying blimp in the background spewing fire out of the bottom i'm like oh all right so there he is without his mask on but in shadow and he's like i need to go obviously so she puts his hat back on and says, good luck. And he flies off as she looks on. Again, all stuff we've kind of seen, just kind of distilled down to kind of its sim simplest form. Flying into this, like all these blimps, just raining fire down on the city. So as he weaves in and out of between them, his um, broom, it says, the smoke trail from the broom is putting out the fire. And then a bunch of bad guys from the blimp start shooting at him. So he just goes up to the blimp with his wand stabs it pokes it and then just flies along and just tears a big old hole in it i think this simple but very effective drawing of the blimp falling out of the sky very good and then he's just going through just zipping through them all and just taking them all out just cutting them all open making them all fall this one's got like a great color scheme with yellows and reds and this evil kind of weird design look on it and so he's just right in front of it using his wand just blasting fire at it. He's shooting back. They're shooting at him. This kind of creepy look on his face jumps onto the, uh, the, the control center of it and just does this hardcore kick to the faces of these people, knocks their asses down. It's such, again, I, I've mentioned this, like this creepy look on his face as he's just got this smile as he's just going through fighting all these guys comes into a room again, Bad guys just in all kind of white, void, basic, no color renditions. And so he, he says the word, he starts to say abracadabra, which is funny because it's such a cliche magical phrase. I, whenever I hear abracadabra, it's that, that Warner Brothers, uh, Chuck Jones, Looney Tunes, Bugs Bunny with the vampire. He's like abracapocus, which would be funny if he said this. <laughs> that would actually be... That would have been great. Anyway, he starts to say that, but then like this chef with like the rolling pin smacks the wand out of his hand saying, Abraka, nothing. So I kind of chuckled at that. Punching back, he gets, takes a fucking shot to the mouth with this rolling pin, knocking his own tooth out. Falls to the ground, gets kicked in the guts. And then here's the main villain. Hover, I was going to say it looks like he's hovering here, but I guess he's just standing here. Met your match, the magically immune, my average Joes. So that's kind of an interesting kind of thought. They're covered in blood, coming after him. He gets his wand up again, but they kick it out of his hand. It goes flying out a window, you know, out into the, you know, falling towards the city. It's gone. They're like, let's see who's under this mask. So they're kicking the shit out of him. So he dives out of the thing, falls falling towards the city and then again just very basic cube shapes for the city you know 
It tells the story. It's pretty basic stuff. He grabs onto like a telephone or a telephone pole. Jesus Christ. A flagpole has the American flag. He grabs it, but it snaps. So he keeps falling down. There's a gargoyle. He tried to grab onto the gargoyle, but snapped that. But then his broom, powerful, interesting shot of like his figure here as he the broom come along and he caught it. Broom. But that snapped still. So all these things are kind of stopping his fall. Going down, falls to the ground. So, kind of a defeat. And probably his death. Like, as he's falling, you can see that he lands into the back of a truck hauling something. I'm not really sure what those could be. Then we cut back to the uh, the girl that was interviewing him. And then the article's like, where is Witch Man? The mystery man seems to have vanished. So, again, we're getting kind of a jump in time and story you just kind of have to piece it together. Like he had his, this big, huge battle, didn't do too well, fell to maybe his apparent death. And meanwhile, the girl, the reporter, a uh, car pulls up. Hey, you're his friend, aren't you? We found him, get in. And then he's like, I said, get in. And then they're like, well, we haven't found him yet, but you're gonna help us track him down. If he's out there, he'll come looking for you. So the bad guys kidnapped the girl by um, tricking her. We cut to witch man and we got a version of death with angel wings though i don't know if i've ever seen that like the classic version of death with that weapon in his hand skeleton but angel wings holding that weapon up to come down on him but his hands come up he catches the blade so is this him is this like metaphorically not so subtly showing him he's fighting off death you know because that's all it is just this one silent page i actually think it's brilliant i, I read this i'm like Brilliant. I love it. He's just gone. He fights death, stops the cutting blow, the killing blow. Oh, excuse me. It's a hiccup. Cut back to him. He's still in the back of that truck at the dump. It dumps him out onto the ground, um, into the water. So he's he, he gets up. He's trudging through the water. He looks kind of disturbed in his face, and he sees his father. And it's this ghostly apparition, skull face with this cloak. He's like, Father, I'm sorry, Father, I failed you. And he says, the Father says in life, I'd never say I was a good man, but in death, I deserve better than this. Release me, you who would call yourself son. So which man saying, I release you. His father says, words, empty words, you have unfinished business. The man who took everything away from me, he still walks the earth. Which man's like, he's alive, but that's impossible. And the father says, I said he still walks the earth. I didn't say he was alive. So, oh, okay. Big giant shot of the hero rising up, you know, coming back from his defeat, near death experience, ex talking with his father, who's not particularly nice to him, but he's going to move on and, you know, avenge and, you know, rise up from the darkest moment. He says, now go on, son, you got a job to do. I also like the visual kind of look of kind of flat colors, but then like the buckle on his belt and his hat are kind of bright. Cut back to the main bad guy who, again, it's interesting. They've never even named him. He's saying, I truly despise getting my hands dirty like this. And she's like, he'll find you. And he's like, that's what I'm counting on. And then boom, right there. He comes bus busting through a window. Um, he's like, this will keep you quiet. Wait, wait, huh? What? Boom. Knocks the vial of whatever out of his hand. Socks him a good one. They fight. Bad guy gets a gun, shoots at Witch Man. Looks like they'd hit him point blank, and it drops him to the ground. Bad guy's like, see ya. Witch Man comes up to the girl, because now the fire has started in the building. He's like, are you okay? She's like, forget about me. I thought he killed you. And he's like, he just may have. So it's like, oh, he did take a shot. So he's actually hurt. She's like, we've got to get you help. He says, you go. Get yourself somewhere where you'll be safe. I'll take care of this. She says, you don't have to do this. He's like, yes, I do. Goes charging after him up the stairs. So the bad guy is kind of giving his big old long kind of explanation of stuff. He's like, you act like this is your town. That's your fatal mistake. I've been running this place for ages. Everyone has been happy from the bottom to the top. And then you came along. We're different from the herd. We're not afraid to act. And Witchman says different. That's one way to say it. So Witchman's going up these stairs, chasing him, but he kind of stops. He's re he's you know he's reeling over from being shot. We see actual blood now forming, but he drags himself up. He keeps going. He keeps fighting. He keeps going on. 
I like this skinny panel of him reaching up onto the girders of the building up here. Like he's struggling through what could be a deathly, you know, a, a death shot, but he's still after this guy. I think this is a pretty effective panel, this low angle as which man's hanging on up here and the bad guy's up here. And like maybe some of the, some of the few sound effects in the whole comic, bang, 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 as he's shooting and they're dinging off the rafters here, runs out of bullets. So he tosses his gun and says, gun me. So his boys down there, like, you got it, boss. They top, toss him up like a classic old school gangster Tommy gun. And so he just starts unloading. Bullets come crashing down as which man, you know, dodges him, coming up these rafters. Bad guy's like, I'm going to destroy this town, build it up. Uh, I'm going to destroy this town, build it up brick by brick into something new and shiny and beautiful. So he unloads again, and all these bullets are just shredding the witch man. And then he's hang barely hanging on. The bad guy's got the gun to his face. Blood's pouring out of him. But then witch man flips up and around and kicks the guy, knocking him down. So now he's standing up here, riddled with bullet holes. Bad guy's barely hanging on. He's like, come on, do it already. I don't need your pity. So he lets himself go. The bad guy's like, I'm not going to be saved by you. I'm not going to be captured. So he drops himself, be seeing you. But which man dives down, grabs him by his jacket. He says, you're not getting off that easy. And then here he is on his broom, flying back and um, dropping him off and throwing him onto the ground in front of not necessarily cops. I'm not sure who these guys are supposed to be. That's interesting. I like the Again, rough, sketchy nature of everything. The change in color tone everywhere. Drops him off. And then <clears throat> it cuts to like, almost like a news article thing. Which band exposes real estate conspiracy by Santique LaRose. The, that's the girl, like the Lois Lane of the story. Shows like a black and white photo of him standing with his arms crossed and all the bad guys. But then he's crawling back. I guess uh, this is post battle. She says, we need to get you to a hospital. He says, take me home. And then he takes and these multiple panels as he removes his mask and we see his bloody face. She says, Oh, which man? He's like, Wallace, call me Wallace. So he's like, he's unmasked himself and revealing himself to us, to her seeing the human side of this guy. She's like, hold still. And then we cut to a scene on a house and which man, He's holding his mask. He's bandaged up. He says, there's very little certainty in this big, scary world. But there's one thing I'm certain of. He lights a fire and is burning his outfit. Like there's his hat in the fire. He says, the world doesn't need witch man. And the fire kind of like grows and kind of encompasses the entire panel. And then it cuts back to that kind of goofy little cutesy little girl that was at the beginning on a little scooter. She's like, I've got an idea. It's crazy, but I like it. And so she takes off scooting around and it says, which girl? With cute little tassels flailing out on the sides. And then it says, which mail? Send your letters of comment uh, via electronic mail to, uh, to Shioli's actual work, you know, email. And then, so... It uh, it says here, so that was basically like the end of the story, roughly speaking. You got the whole kind of basic origins of a superhero, like where he comes from, what his powers are, some basic villains to fight, romantic interest, a, a villain, a, a big battle to fight and have to rise up and test himself. And then he decides he wants to surrender his his life as this crime fighter. I like this shot. It's very classic, like Clark Kent Superman and these multiple panels as he runs along, takes off his outfit, turns into witch man and flies into the city. Very cool. It says here, it's been a while since a cool new superhero made a debut, especially one that isn't a derivative of an existing character. We've all waited long enough. This is the comic book you deserve. Think of Action Comics number one, Detective 27, Amazing Fantasy 15, Hulk number one, Spawn number one. This is the newest in a long line of legendary super character first appearance 
appearances. Welcome to which man's world, which man's world, well, we're all just living in it. Who has a better rogues gallery than which men? Nobody. That's who. The world's greatest rogues gallery. And we got the creepy crawler, gross spider looking thing, the spooky cat, the bat, the cauldron, Mr. October, and witch man of the West. It's like a witch guy, but he's a cowboy in this ridiculous outfit. That's really super funny. And then it kind of cuts back to like a post credit thing. She's uh the girl is walking in on Wallace, the, the witch man guy. She's like, what are you making? She's like, oh no, I thought you were done with all of this. He said, so do I. But all those things I said, they were all true, but I've got to do this, even if it doesn't make a whit of sense. So he charges off, jumps off into the night, and then there's some creepy looking villain monster. It says, if you're looking for trouble, you found it. And it says down here in the bottom corner, to be continued. Flip the page. Now, it just keeps going right there, boom. And so there's all these panels, a bunch of like, what, 16 panels of witch man fighting this, whatever the fuck this monster is. It says, recognize me. He says, should I? The, the monster says, recognize me. Witch man says, should I? They fight. And this creature's like, I'm the man who killed your daddy. Witch man's like, no, it can't be. So then the creature turns into like a a version of the man who did kill his dad. He says, now do you remember? Which man yells, go back to hell. The monster says, that's the spirit. Which man socks him a good one, stomping him. The bad guy's yelling, no, no. As which man just keeps stomping him and puts his, like, his heel through the eye of this thing. And then the creature is burning on fire. And then which man's just saying, I did it, dad. And then he's like, at his grave, you can rest now. So there's a wrap up of the big thing of releasing his father's spirit. And then we see like a scarecrow hanging up here and which man lights it on fire. I, I don't know what that's supposed to be representative of. It's interesting. And then you got these kind of like cartoony drawings of Tom Scioli himself. Looks like screenshots taken from the, uh, the total recall show that he does on uh, YouTube and Instagram, um, just showing him. And it says, Tom Scioli is the author of Jack Kirby, the epic like epic life of the King, King of Comics, and I Am Stan, a graphic biography of the legendary Stan Lee. After working on two back-to-back -back biographies of famous comic creators, Tom saw how much fun they were having inventing new superheroes and racked his brain to come up with one of his own, which man, a superhero for the ages, a new classic. And it's got all his contact information on there. And that's literally the inside back cover. Um, one thing I really, really appreciate about this, besides everything, is that this is a thick book. It's not just a simple, like, 17 or 20-page comic. It's like 40-something pages. So very much worth the Kickstarter. I've talked about this before, where sometimes you get a book and it's just a skinny little thing and you got to wait a year or more for the next issue. So I appreciate the fact that he created a thick book with lots of material in there and you cover all kinds of ground. And so I could see how this may not be for everybody. I can kind of potentially see in the comments of this video as I film this, I'm just kind of thinking in my mind's eye, some people are going to not get it and not like it at all. And that's fine. You know, we all don't have to like all the same thing. But I I feel like I will – I can always say that you can respect a guy's efforts and creativity and productivity even if you're not particularly a fan of the work itself. Now, I liked this a lot. It's very different and it took me a minute to kind of get it. But once I got into it and was just paying attention to the storytelling and the – economical way of telling this entire adventure of this guy without any kind of wasted time or effort. It's just all the fat is cut out and we're just right to the important points and you get a whole superhero epic. And he's like, you could go back into this character and tell moments from this entire book and expand on them if you wanted to, or there's room for more in the future for such a weird kind of interesting different character i did watch on the cartoonist kayfabe channel before i um started talking about this book there was an interview um in the last year sometime the last couple of months where again the late ed piscor was uh talking with shioli and it was about this book what kind of sucks it was like an hour and a half video and they didn't talk about the book almost at all they talked about everything else 
concerning comics and creativity and storytelling. But one thing she only did say, uh, something to the effect of, it's an homage to Golden Age comics where anything goes, anything can happen. It's just such a wild and weird inventive time where people are just making interesting stuff. Now, I don't know enough about any of that stuff to speak on it, but I do get the concept, and he did specifically shout that out, and I, I think it makes sense. It works. So I wonder if we'll see more of this character, if he's going to do more on it, or if he just kind of felt like this was a one-off to do, or if he'll let other people take a stab at it. I mean, I think that would be interesting, let other people do witch man stories under his kind of watch, kind of like Matt Wagner's done with Grendel. There's all kinds of great Grendel stories that uh, other artists and writers have done. So I don't know. There's a lot of possibilities, or maybe it'll just be this, and that's it. Who knows? Either way, it's a Kickstarter that I was very happy to support, and I was very uh, pleasantly surprised with the result, because sometimes you get these uh, books that you never know really what you're going to get until it's in hand and the money's spent, and sometimes... Maybe it's not what you really wanted, but I found this to be incredibly entertaining. Um, he's still got, he's going to have copies available as I understand it. So you can still get your hands on it. You just got to go hit up Shioli on his uh, social medias and uh, see if you can't get a hand on him. It's worth it. I think it's a really interesting book to have and it's good to support a really talented, hardworking guy. So anyway, that's all I've got for now. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one.